Um, Shovel Knight is a 2D platformer. It was a Kickstarter, right, originally? That I actually don't know. I believe so. Um, it's a 2D platformer uh, made by Yacht Games, and it's on oh a lot of systems. It's on Wii U, uh, 3DS. Uh, I think it's going to be on Vita and um, PS3 at the very least, if not some other systems. So what's interesting about so Shovel Knight, you look at it, and it's another retro styled 2D platformer, meaning the art is it's pixel art. Okay, it's, it's that that in between eight and sixteen bit sort right. of look. It's it's meant Six, to yeah. it's meant to harken back to the eight sixteen bit era. Um, it uses all chip tune music, and you know it's 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 level based and it's fairly straightforward. And what amazes me about Shovel Knight, and I'm gonna sound like kind of a dick here. Is uh, that I downloaded it, and not only do I not dislike it, I, I think it's fucking genius. It's it's a brilliant game. So how are you a dick? Well, because besides for- besides everything, <laughs> everything else that makes you a dick, how are you a dick in this? Instance? I unso- unfortunately, I think a lot of these retro themed platformers are half baked, and they only get it part right. They focus too much on the graphics and the music, but they don't nail the gameplay. The control Which is sucks. Most it's slippery. Yes. Or they will focus a lot on making the game really hard, but they won't focus on making the game fun, and the graphics won't be, you know, particularly well. Or there'll be a mishmash, like they won't seem cohesive. So what makes Shovel Knight so great is that it's got this beautiful difficulty curve. It's got these amazing large sprites. It's got all these mechanics and all these little nods to various games. We'll talk about the mechanics a little but bit. But it doesn't. But it doesn't. It doesn't rip them wholeheartedly or rely on them. So. As Shovel Knight, you have to go and rescue Shield Knight. And uh, Shovel Knight's main way of attacking is with the shovel. Now, you can slash with the shovel like a sword. Okay. It just gives you a single slash. Or, um, and they, they quoted it as, a, I believe, a direct influence, uh, heavily influenced by DuckTales, which is why I was so interested, you can do a pogo jump with the, 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 the shovel. The shovel. Well, which is totally possible in real life, by the way. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, same with a cane, obviously. <laughs> you know, with an oaken cane or whatever. So the thing is, is it's a little bit different. Um, you just jump and you press down and you, you you point the shovel down. And if you hit an enemy or other certain objects, you can keep bouncing. But if you hit the floor, you stop. Unlike in DuckTales where you can just bounce all over the sure. place. So you have to be a bit more precise with your jumps. Um, towns are very reminiscent of uh, Zelda 2. Um, and the fact that they are side-scrolling and you can talk to characters and you can find... You can't go inside buildings, but you can find buildings and upgrade your health and get okay. your magic. There's even people hidden in rooms that look similar to the mage's room from Zelda 2 where you can learn new moves or do other okay. things. Um, it's got a little bit of a Mega Man flair to it. Uh, I would say mostly in terms of the the the, the sound. Um, the music is, is quite good. It's I don't like it quite as much as I think everyone else is enjoying it, but it is a very good soundtrack. And it's got kind of this up-tempo thing going for it that is common in a lot of Mega Man's. It's got world maps like a Mario 3. Um, there's bosses at the end of every main stage with really fun patterns that you have to learn to avoid and attack. There's secondary items you can use like Castlevania that you collect vials for. Wow. So it just it mixes and matches all the stuff but it never feels like it's trying uh, too hard. And it does get challenging quick and there's a lot of extras to find um, but it seems like a game, and I, I, I'm probably halfway through the first run through. Um, it's just a game that seems like there's a ton of things that you can do. For 15 bucks, this is the first time a game has ever said that it is going to play like a retro game and look like a retro game, and I feel like it's actually backed that up. Now, did you do you have this? Did you get it for the Wii U or Steam, or where'd you get it? I got it for the Wii U. Okay. Um, why? Because I just got a Wii U. Uh, I was playing Wii U when I, I knew I wanted the game, but I just I saw it up there. I decided I wanted to download it. Now, I this is where something that I rail on Nintendo for comes into play. Um, I'm really upset that Nintendo doesn't do a cross by cross play thing, because if this is on, and I could be wrong, but I'm just gonna guess, if this is on PS3, I guarantee you, if I bought it for the PS3, it would be on my Vita. I can't play it on my 3DS as well. I would have to buy another $15 copy really? of Shovel Knight. Yeah, that, that's a huge failure. Yeah. Because that will turn some people off. That will turn some people off. Now, yeah. I'm okay with having... Now, here's the thing. The levels are incredibly long. Like, in no way during this game are you really going to feel short-changed. Like, the levels are long, 
Actually, if I if I had almost one beef with the game, it's that the levels, they don't get boring, but like just because of how difficult they can get, there's like five checkpoints per level, and between certain checkpoints, you'll be like, where the hell is the next checkpoint? So it's almost not particularly great for portable, despite the fact that you can sleep the 3DS, because you kind of have to be able to sit down and work your way through the level, beat the boss and all that. Oh, sure. So anyways, I mean... I don't want to give away too much. I don't want to spoil a lot. There's a lot of really awesome, cute moments. A lot of really cool, big enemies. A lot of just... What the fuck stuff where, like... It, it makes you smile and it makes you happy. Vani, who Aww. wasn't playing it, looked up... Because I was laughing about something. And she saw something that was going on on screen with... One of the good... I'll just say one of the good guy characters who is half something and half something. That should be enough for people who have played it. And Vani put down the book and watched everything that was going on. She's like, this is... This is brilliant. You know, this is really cool. So I would really urge people to go out and get it. Um, if you've ever, and I, I don't want to sound like a dick, but if you've ever been burned by like a way forward game, if you ever bought like, I don't know, for, for instance, the Adventure Time game or one of the games where like uh, you're or, like. Or, or, or DuckTales. Or whatever. DuckTales uh, Remastered. Yeah, I didn't game. play it. I don't need to now. Shovel Knight. You promised to play yeah, DuckTales Remastered. Knight, Shovel Knight has replaced it. You promised to play it for the podcast. Shovel Knight's the new person in town promised yeah maybe i will after this and be actually be extra <laughs> well, like this is extra crap but i'm just saying if you've ever been burnt if you've ever been if you've ever bought any game that promised you like a retro experience and you've been burned and you're looking at this and you're you're squinting your eyes and you're like i don't know i i i, I can't speak for everyone but i would almost promise you that you are not going to be disappointed by this and the good news is that this is you hear a lot of horror stories when it comes to and this was kickstarted okay uh, you hear a lot of horror stories from kickstarter games and they either either never come out or the funds go away this raised three hundred eleven thousand dollars their goal was only 75 so obviously the money went into the game oh you it can did. see it i can say so that. that's good news so obviously when you put the resources into it it's, you're going to have a good product and everyone's going to buy it because this to me this is like the biggest indie game i've heard of since like super meat boy and this it's their huge. debut yeah well, that, well there you go so that they're, they're be able to produce a, all these off the, off, the, off the bank they're making off of this they'll be able to make a few more games well, off the goodwill I mean, of the fact so. that they ran a Kickstarter that they didn't botch, of the fact that yeah. they put out a game that was exactly as they described it. Um, these people have a very, I think, a very bright future in front of them. All right, pay us, Yacht, gum, uh, yacht Games. Pay us. <laughs> yacht Gum? Is yacht that Gum? That's a special type of gum for rich people. It tastes like money. Yacht Gum, the official gum <laughs> sponsor of the CU Podcast. <laughs> Are you going out for a trip around, around the Chesapeake? Yacht Gum. <laughs> yacht Gum. Smell like money all the time. <laughs> uh, I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm so fucking tired. I know, yeah. 